here hopefully sometime. Um, can you lay out a bit, um, both of you, on you know kind of what that process will entail, uh, kind of leading up to the in introduction of the the next bill, which as we I think kind of discussed internally at, um, at our firm is kind of the you know the meat and potatoes of the bill, if you will. Um, okay, talking about the bill. Okay, the IR promotional bill. That is not the bill to legalize fishing in Japan. Correct. That's the bill to impose the national government to write the another bill to legalize fishing. It's a very complicated <laughs> process, but we try to uh, separate the decision uh, two step. So we have to another bill being passed to legalize Kishino. And the first bill say that the government have to do that within one year, right after the election of the first bill. So we will have another discussion over the second bill. Maybe if, if it's happen in this year, it will be the, another discussion will be will be in the next year, in 2015, and then we are going to get into the bidding process. So, and we separated into the bidding process into two parts. The part, first half would be the cho to choose the location. In other words, the prefecture. And then we, we will get into the second bidding process to choose the operator to, who is in charge of the construction itself. So I would say that the first bidding process, we need maybe at least six months. And another six months will be needed for the uh, developers. So adding up that, we need one year bidding process to choose the operator. And then Maybe it could be MGM or another operators. However, they are going to start construction. Hopefully, you you will get that. <laughs> and the the another issue would be that um, in Japan, the construction code is very very strict compared with Macau and Singapore, because we are the country ha we have the earthquake, so we have to have very strict strict to construction code. So it takes more time than what you imagine. Mm -hmm. If you would like to build a big, large scale development. So the question would be, can we do that by 2020 or it would be after the Olympic 2020? So that's the big argument we have right now. Yeah, I just, I mean, just to add to that a, a, a little bit, um, I think that, um, there, there is a way to dual, dual track some of this. Um, and, and again, that would be my recommendation to government, uh, which would be to, uh, on the one hand, work hard on the implementation bill, which would take a year, um, and along the way, figuring out what needs to be in that bill, what doesn't need to be in that bill, where the regulations sit, how the commission would, uh, uh, would, be, set, would be set up. Obviously, as an operator, would be extremely happy to assist in, in, in that process. We have plenty of experience in that area. And then at the same time, the prefectures will be jockeying for position. And in order to speed up the process generally, it might make sense to give them, as I said earlier, a little bit more latitude to actually start talking to potential applicants, potential operators, uh, and potentially even run some kind of request for concept um, type competition at a fairly early stage, so a prefecture could narrow down to one or two operators, uh, and then when you get to the, uh, and, and, and that will in itself allow the prefecture to put in a much better application to central government, so that the prefecture gets awarded the license, and then it will also allow the prefecture to run a, a, an RFP subsequently that doesn't take quite so long. Um, so, in order to get to this magic date of 2020, um, in any jurisdiction, everything has to happen right. The thing has to pass, or the, the, the initial promotion bill does need to pass before the end of this year. The implementation bill needs to take a year, and the, and the involvement of the prefectures and central government needs, needs to operate in a, in, in, in a good way. It's very, very easy for any aspect of this to go off the rails, and suddenly we'll see ourselves in 2025 having the same discussion in this room. So, on the, um, 
and we've touched on this a, a little bit, but the the timing of the Olympics and the um, the potential timeline that we both of you just discussed. I mean, it, do you think the um, the Japanese policymakers today are they viewing that Olympic timeline? Uh, it, are they viewing it in a more positive light and that they really would like to get at least one IR um, up and operational, concurrent, essentially, or just prior to the Olympics in 2020? Or at this point, it, it, do they, is that not really a deciding factor? Um, actually, they are clearly set the target, the target of the opening year in 2020. So they're still keen on that. Okay. And if, if they would like to see the casino open by 2020, I would advise them to, okay, to allow casino operators to open up the casino in phases. So if we can, you know, <laughs> have separate, separate phases before Olympic and after the Olympic, we can partially open up the casino by 2020, so, or the, we may choose the, you know, the place, the candidate city, some candidate city set the uh, location, uh, okay, they, okay, okay, they can, they can just, they can just add the casino in a timber book. Shorter period of construction, we can, we can, that allow to, you know, catch up the time by 2020. So yeah, there, there is some kind of candidate city right now. They are trying to introduce casino into the existing theme park or the resorts. So that's another solution, I think. So I think that the, the issue with trying to make a 2020 deadline by doing something that is effectively kind of substandard means that you don't meet the policy goals here. So, you know, putting a casino inside a theme park um, or building out some space within, in, a, in, a, in an initial first phase 